Okay, so we're looking for IB geography at two case studies of population policies. So we're just going to look today at Singapore, but we need to have a look at the background. So we're looking at the pro-natalist policy, but we need to give the history for the pro-natalist policy, which was an anti-natalist policy from the, the early 1970s, all right? So if we go back to the 1960s when Singapore became an independent nation, we started to see a lot of immigration and population growth was relatively quite high, right? You can see there, looking at a population structure of something similar to stage two in the demographic transition model, maybe moving into stage three. So quite a wide base and high birth rates and high fertility rates at that time. So that was the structure in the 1960s. So a large youthful dependent group there. So those between zero and 14. So later on, the Singaporean government in 1972 to 1987 introduced a stop at two policy here. So there are a number of things that they did, right? They used the media to promote small families and we're seeing that today with the pro natalist policy. So the use of media is also important as well. So it's not something that they are forcing people into do, but there's a lot of incentives. So free education for smaller families, access to healthcare for smaller families, etc. All right, access to low cost contraception. Okay, so stop at two, things like sterilization programs as well, and access to family planning. Okay. So these are the type of things that they had. Again, this is our history. So a couple of adverts here, all right? So again, we're talking about media campaigns. That's really important as well. So if we do have a look at it right through to 1987, when they switched to a pro-natalist policy, the anti-natalist policy was very, very successful. Probably too successful because the fertility rate has fallen right down. If we keep going and have a look here, so 1970s, all the way through to 1987, we start having a look, our fertility rates falling down below our replace, replacement rate of 2.1. You can see here in 2018, it is incredibly low, right? So this is the background. We had a stop at two, we had an anti natalist policy. However, the problem was, as a result, the fertility rate, rate went well below the replacement rate. Okay, so this left, left us with a couple of problems here in Singapore. The workforce essentially would shrink over a period of time and the ageing ratio has also or would also without immigration increase, all right? So that's one of the issues here. So if we talk about why, pretty standard if I look at Western countries and as countries develop further later marriage, all right? Emancipation of women, you can see here in Singapore, if I look at it in 2019, women are getting married uh, much later, so 28 years and men 30 years. So women are pursuing careers, more equality here, children are deemed to be very expensive. If you have a look at the bottom right here, $632,000, this is Singapore dollars estimated to raise one child in a middle class family, right, middle income. Housing is also a factor, so people are sort of feeling that until I've got security of a home which is deemed expensive despite government subsidising, then they're delaying marriage and starting a family much later. So these are our pro-nationalist policies, 1987. It's the same thing. A lot of advertising, government-sponsored dating. So we've seen romance in Singapore, increased maternity leave. Uh, we've now got paternity leave. That's increased as well. Okay, so a range of things here. So more recently, we've seen media campaigns uh, at MRT stations around Singapore. Paternity leave has been introduced and more recently that's increased from one to two weeks. One of the issues here is not everyone's taking this. We've got a baby bonus with a child development account that has more recently increased as well. And through COVID, the baby bonus has also increased. You can see here if I'm evaluating this, this is replacement rate of 2.1. Other than the dragon years, uh, really what I'm seeing here is that it is continuously falling. All right, so this is my evaluation here, still below replacement rate. We still need immigration to keep the dependency and aging ratio low, right? Even though we've had advertising, maternity, paternity, baby bonuses, child development, fertility rates have remained relatively uh, low. So the reasons remain the same, all right? And here's a few examination questions you can look at.